All right, so we have our ball game, we have our collectibles, but it wouldn't really be a game unless we can win. So what we're gonna do in this video is try to create a win volume that will trigger a win state. We're going to put the win functionality on our game mode, right? That's our larger game functionality that'll be in all the different levels that we make. And we're gonna pass that down to a couple of other parts of our game to finally get like a win screen or something. So uh, let's get started. As usual, we're going to open up our ball game mode. We're going to, I think in this case, I'm gonna make an event instead of a function. And the reasoning is that with a win event, sometimes you wanna like delay your functionality a little bit, like you wanna wait a little bit, play a song, open up a menu, something. We may want the option to use some delay nodes. So I'm going to keep it as an event, but we can always turn it into a function later. For now, I'm going to custom event inside of my game mode. We'll call this win, all right, put that right there. And let's actually create a print string win. And I know that if we see this text, then we're calling it correctly. So I'm just setting up sort of the skeleton framework of where my function should go. And then I figure out how to connect it there. So I'm going to compile and save. And now we need to figure out how we can call this function on my game mode from a win volume in our scene. Let's get out of here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new actor for a volume that we can put inside of our level that when the player goes through it, similar to our collectibles, it will talk to the game mode and it'll tell it that we have won. And we would wanna put this thing at the end of our map so that we could hit it and, and we win, we've gotten to the very end. So I'm going to come down here under game. Let's make a new folder. Let's uh, call this gameplay, something like that. So inside of my gameplay folder, I'm going to right click. I'm gonna create a new blueprint class. And this is gonna be a type of actor. It's just gonna be a object inside the world and we'll call this BP underscore win volume. All right, let's right click, save that and open it up. Okay, so the first thing with our win volume is I'm gonna make a visual for it because if it's invisible, we'll never know what we're trying to go for. Uh, so if I come over here, I'm gonna do my add component, which is a cube and I'm gonna resize this. In a larger game, you would make your own custom mesh and you would import it in and you would add a static mesh and then put it here. But I'm just trying to prototype something with the basic shapes. So I'm going to resize this. Let's do, I think, a scale. So vertical, we're going to do a 0.1 and we're going to go two, two, like that. This would be a pretty big pad, that, like a zone. We could put some particles and stuff above it if we want. And let's also give it a fun material. Let's see one that I found earlier. It goes a laser pointer, kind of crazy. This, this green one right here, uh, instance. The big thing is you probably wanna make sure that you choose a material instance rather than a material. It's just a lot more optimized, uh, has some cool uh, glowy effects. It's green, communicates, you probably wanna to touch this thing. So we'll compile, save. The other thing I wanna do here is I wanna turn off my collision. You could have collision if it's like a sloped mesh or something that is part of your object. But for me, I'm, I have it pretty close to the ground. I just want the visual. I don't really want it to mess with collisions. So I have my cube selected. I'm gonna scroll down, collision presets. I'm gonna say no collision. I do want collision, but not on my cube. So let's add our box. I'm gonna type in box, box collision. So we're gonna use this to test an overlap, but first I'm gonna resize this. First I'm gonna uh, box extent. This is the size of the volume. I'm gonna change this to 100. Tab 100, tab 100. You could scale it with this, but with collisions, I like to try to keep those 111 scale if I can. I pull this up and see if 100 is about right for me. Covers my mesh at the bottom, so that's good. Okay, so we have our box collision. We need to add the event so that we can test for an overlap for the player. This part, again, should be review. You select your box collision and you scroll down to on component begin overlap. Make sure you have this selected, your box. Click the plus button, begin overlap. Now we can fire this event whenever something passes through this box collision. So I'm looking for the uh, player pawn. So I'm gonna right click, say get player pawn. And I'm gonna test the other actor, because remember, we're on the win volume, so the other actor is gonna be the player, we hope, right? So other actor, equal, equal. And if the other actor is the player, and these are the same thing, then we want to branch. 
because if they're the same, we want to continue. If they're not, we don't really want to continue. Okay, so if it's true, then we want to win. So the same thing that we've been doing before, we want to test for the game mode and test the ball game mode. So let's get to game mode, right? Because we're trying to figure out how to get to this point. We need to get the ball game mode specifically and then call the win this, this event that we made. So we are going to pull off of this. We'll cast to ball game mode like that, plug that in. All right, so if our game mode is the ball game mode and we've gotten this far so our player has passed through, then we want to run the win. So if you type in win, okay. Now I hope if I compile save, if I see this print string, then this should work. Come back out. We're gonna place one of these in the scene. So um, control space to bring that up, drag it in, place it there. Save it and press play. And we're looking to see that the win text pops up when we go in. Okay, it popped up, great. So now we need, just need to get the win functionality working because our win volume is calling everything appropriately. So one important thing to talk about here is inside of our game mode, we are getting to this point. Now, when we call the win event inside of our game mode, there are probably a lot of things that we wanna do related to the overall game mode, like save a high score or uh, show the results or manage the different players or whatever. And we still wanna do that. But in addition to all that, which we're not gonna do now, we also need to tell the player controller to handle the player specific things. So in this case, even though we are calling our win right here, I'm gonna leave this as placeholder, but then we are going to pass it back down to the player controller and tell it to display appropriate things related to that player. Because one player may get a win screen, a different player may get a lose screen. We want the ability to keep that at a high level and then pass it down when we need to. Either way, I want to tell the player controller to enable a win screen, essentially. And I don't want to do that from the game mode, but the game mode still needs to know that we won. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm telling the game mode we won, and then the game mode is telling each of the different player controllers that uh, they need to also handle win stuff. So we're going to come down here. We'll get the player controller, and we're going to cast to our specific all player controller like that. And we're going to come over here plug that in, uh, and now our player controller needs a win node as well. Now here's the thing, I'm gonna set this up as a cast, but later on when we learn about uh, event dispatchers, this is a perfect case for when we would want the player controller to listen for a game mode event or you know an event dispatcher, and when it happens, get notified and respond to it. That way we're not keeping this direct connection. I'm just keeping this for now because we're still learning, but later on, just to show you ahead of time, this would be one case that you could turn into an event dispatcher. Uh, anyways, we're just gonna do this the normal way for now as we keep practicing and I'm going to compile save. I'm gonna hop into player controller and I'm going to make a win event. So let's make a custom event right, win and we're gonna pull this over here. I don't know if I've talked about this in length or not, but the reason why sometimes we're making an event and sometimes we're making a function is that if I think I might want to delay things later, like use a delay node or do a timer or something, I, I usually start that off with an event. But if I know for sure that I don't need to delay, then I'll just start that off as a function. You could move it around either way. It's not really that hard, um, but I'm gonna use an event in this case. So I'm gonna pull off and I'm going to leave my print statement. Say when, so we're just gonna pull this backwards. We're gonna say compile save if we see it there, then we know that we're getting that far. So I'm gonna remove that. You know, this is where we would do game mode win stuff, which we don't really need for now. And then from my ball controller, my ball player controller, we're going to look for this new win event that we created. Now, if you don't see that, you may need to go back and compile. Like if you don't compile, it's not gonna register all the different functions and things. So make sure you do that. I almost obsessively compile save, as you can see, but it just makes sure that I'm very current. So compile save, we're calling that. You can double click it. Now we're right here. So at this point, we want to spawn a win screen. Now the thing is we don't have that yet. So let's go ahead and make our win screen widget. So I'm going to backtrack out of here, uh, control space. We're going to go to our UI. We're going to make a new widget for this, and we're just going to create it at the moment that we win. So let's do our user interface, widget blueprint, uh, user widget, and type WBP for widget blueprint underscore win screen like that. Okay, I'm going to control S, save that. 
open that up and we're going to do the things that we usually do here is we're going to find our canvas, so type in canvas in the palette up here. Make sure you're, you're in designer mode. Drag your canvas panel down. We have our canvas. I'm also going to get some text. So I'll type in text, drag that down. All we're really going to do here is just display when text and that's it. I'm going to set my anchor for my text over here at the top middle. And then once I do that, if I zero out my X and Y, and my text, you see it pops out over there. Now that it's at the top middle, I can actually bring it down intentionally. So I'll bring it down to like right there. I'm just clicking and dragging 200 and I want the pivot to be in the middle. So I'm going to change my alignment. So my X is my side to side. I want that to be 0.5 and we can do Y 0.5 as well. That's fine. And then our text alignment, so our justification down here, we're going to put that in the centers just so it's very, very centered. I think that's pretty good. I think I want to change this to you when like that, and maybe we make it bigger. So I'm going to open up font like that. Yeah, that's good. Probably should size this the way we want and then, you know, come back over here, fix this. So zero in the X and then 200 right there. Let's round this off to the nearest. So that's 375. Okay, pretty good. Yours doesn't have to look just like mine. This is just an example. Compile, save. I'm also going to uh, relabel my text down here. So we'll call this win text like that. Compile, save again. So uh, we have our win text and we've customized it enough, I think. Let's come back out. We have our widget. You know, we can see what it looks like, but we need to spawn this to the player controller's viewport when we win. Like if we hit play, we don't, we don't see it because it doesn't exist yet. So in order to spawn it, we're going to go back to our ball game player controller. And when we win, we're just going to create our widget. So let's drag off of this, the create widget. There we go. We want to choose the widget that we want to create. So if we labeled ours correctly, we can just type WBP underscore uh, win screen. That's the one we want. Owning player, we're already inside the owning player, but um, if it doesn't say self here, it's usually good practice to like make that very explicit. So if I right click, I'm just going to type in self, get a reference to self and we will plug that in right there. So we've created the widget, but it's kind of floating off in the middle of nowhere. We want to assign it to a particular viewport. So uh, we want to do it on this viewport on this player controller. So we're going to um, drag off. So once it's created, we'll type add to viewport. If you press enter, it'll auto connect that right there. And I I think that's all we need. We created the widget, the windscreen, and assigned it to this viewport. Um, we don't need the sprint string anymore. If we see the windscreen, we should be good. Let's scoot that in over there. And we could always do additional things like play music, you know, particles, camera stuff, whatever. We could compile, save, come back in here, hit play, and let's see what happens. You win. Perfect. Now, one last thing that I want to do is I want to lock my input so that I can't keep giving, uh, you know, the WASD movement to my ball. Um, and it shouldn't be too hard to do that. All I need to do is right click and type disable input. And the target for this is an actor. Now, I don't want to disable all my input. I want to keep my input that's on the player controller, right? Like this is all our uh, reload and respawn stuff, but our ball movement is on the ball pawn. So I think if we right click and we type in player pawn and we plug this in, I think this will work with just the player pawn. We'll try it out. Uh, if not, we'll change it. If we drag off a player controller, again, we're going to get a reference to self. Okay, we'll compile. Oh, we need to connect this right there. I'll save. All right, so let's try it again. Okay, you can see it keeps rolling, but that's fine. We could always disable movement and stuff later. Um, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> it keeps going off into nowhere. But yeah, we, we've locked the input. Let's try one more thing. I want to make sure that uh, I can still reload the level. Yeah, okay, so we're locking the input on the WASD, but not our player controller, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. Okay, I think this is all we need. So at this point, we have our collectibles, we have our player actions, and we have our win condition. I think this is the very basics of a small but functionally complete game. Um, I'm not promising that it's an interesting game, just so that it is technically complete. And at this point, you could start customizing it. You could start doing your own stuff, like little hazards or uh, whatever else you want. But I think for now, this is a good brief exploration of different parts of the gameplay framework and how we can get some of these things to talk to each other and how we can control a game from the top level down.